Hi, I'm Hawken with Top Don, and today we are going to walk through the new Top Don Phoenix Smart. The Top Don Phoenix Smart is a full, functional, professional level diagnostic scan tool. This tool will be a great solution for your shop on a number of different uh, fronts. Uh, it does pre scan and post scans. Uh, reports that you can give to your customers, uh, works with the battery testers that we offer, also works with uh, ADOS, so if you want to activate the tool and use it for ADOS calibrations, you can do that. Uh, also does programming via a cloud-based programming service that we offer, uh, and a number of other functions. So we're going to kind of walk through all of those things on the tool and show you some of the features and also how to change some settings if you do need to in the future on your tool. So we're actually going to start in the top right here on the gear and we're going to click on that and we're going to walk through this menu first. Now in this menu we have a number of different options and we're just going to go through them one at a time. Phoenix MDCI is where you can view the communication dongle that you have for your tool. Uh, if you have more than one dongle, you can actually activate more than one dongle to your account, and it will show the other ones that you have activated on your account. And when I say your account, I mean the email address that you use to log into the tool. Uh, activate MDCI is if you get a new one or when you first buy the tool and you're setting it up. This is where you're going to enter in your serial number and activation code on the password letter that comes with the tool. Fix MDCI firmware. That is something that you're going to use usually at the request of one of our support professionals. I do not recommend doing this unless you are being specifically asked to use this. Online programming. The online programming menu contains cloud-based programming service for a number of different vehicles. Uh, this, is, this database that has all of this programming is not all-encompassing, so just because a vehicle brand is list, listed here does not necessarily mean that there will be coverage on every single module for every model of vehicle made by that manufacturer. So sometimes there will be programming sometimes there will not we do our very best to get the best coverage we can on this but of course there are always holes in every database and of course there will be in this one as well uh, for coverage we do have audi volkswagen bmw hyundai kia land rover jaguar mercedes mg nissan porsche renault seat skoda and subaru now, uh, Land Rover and Jaguar actually access through the same menu, which is just labeled Land Rover. But, uh, same thing would be true for Mini Cooper, as long as it is a Mini Cooper made by BMW, uh, then it would be found through that menu that says BMW. So, just some things to keep in mind on the online programming. Data stream sample. This is where you can find data stream that you have saved on uh, any vehicle that you've recorded it, and you can access those and play those back. Profile. Profile is where you set up your profile for logging into the tool, so you can change your email, you can change your gender, you can change your nickname, all of that stuff right there. Change password. Uh, this is the password that you use to log into the tool that you use for your account. If you need to change it, this is where you would do that. We're not going to do that at this time. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you would go and set up the Wi-Fi connection uh, for the tool. Diagnostic software clear. Uh, if you want to delete some software out of the vehicle, for instance, uh, some of the brands of vehicles that maybe you do not use on a given ve uh, given area. So, for instance, we're in North America. We don't have Seat. We don't have Shine Ray or Shang Chai or some of these other brands. So we could selectively delete these off of the tool if we wanted to do so. It's not crucial that you do this, but if you want to, you certainly can. So if we go through here and we say, hey, you know what, we don't use this, we're going to delete that. Look at that, we deleted it from the tool. Now, there's a few other options here we're going to go through. So we've also got business information, where we can change our business information, upload a logo and whatnot. Customer management, right there. We can add individual customers. Now this is something you might find really useful if you're a mobile diagnostician. Uh, this is where you could enter in names of shops where you perform services, and then you can assign each diagnostic report that you generate with the tool to a given customer. 
So this is something you can use for that function if you wish. Uh, as a regular service shop, I don't think it's real practical to enter an in for every single customer you have, but you absolutely can if you want to. Diagnostic record. This is where you can see all of the vehicles that you have scanned, and it's also a quick link to get back into a vehicle you just worked on. So for instance, you can see there's a Volkswagen up at the very top here. If we wanted to connect back to that vehicle, we could do that from this menu right here. And you can go in here by dates as well and months. So it can kind of go through the menu there and see all the different stuff we've had it hooked up to. Again, that was diagnostic record. Photo album is where you can store screenshots. So if you've taken screenshots with the tool or physical pictures with the tool, because remember, the tool does in fact have an actual camera. This is where you will find those pictures stored in the photo album. Screen recorder. This is where you can see all the recordings that you have for the tool. So if you have anything that you've recorded on the tool while you're driving it or anything of that nature, uh, live recordings of data stream, things like that, you can see any screen record videos here in this section. Okay, then there's also settings. And that is kind of a deeper settings menu than the menu we were just in. Uh, in here, you can see if you need to update the tools operating system, you can check for updates on the About tab up here in the top left. You can look at, uh, you can turn the sleep time up or down if you want it to never sleep or you want it to sleep sooner or longer. Uh, that's what turns the tool off and allows it to conserve energy. It doesn't fully shut down, but it will conserve energy. Um, units, you can change from metric to imperial. Um, most people are going to change to metric when you're doing ADOS calibrations. Uh, a lot of other people would prefer to use imperial units uh, when they're doing other basic tasks. Uh, language, you can change your language. Time zone, you can change your time zone. T code is if you are doing any software activations, so whether you're adding ADOS calibration capability to the tool or you are updating, updating your subscription uh, because your subscription has expired, T code is where you would enter that. Clear cache. Um, that would just basically be if your tool's starting to slow down a little bit or anything of that nature, you can clear your cache and it will restart the app. Um, not necessary to do this, generally speaking, but you might get asked by support at some point if you're experiencing any issues. Uh, USB connection mode. This is where you can set it if you want to connect it to your computer to restore or, excuse me, retrieve pictures from it uh, or videos. You would set it to device mode instead of host mode and then you would connect to the computer and it would allow you to retrieve pictures and videos from it just like you would a cell phone. Restore factory settings. This is something you don't want to do unless you're being asked by support or if you are selling the tool, this might be something that you would want to do to reset and wipe out everything in the tool uh, that you have set up and made it your own. Log out. Uh, basically, if you want to log out of the tool so it cannot be used, um, you would have to have your email and password to log back into the tool, but that would hypothetically disable the tool if somebody else were to take it. Um, so if you want to do that, you certainly can do that. So that concludes the settings menu. Now we're going to go in and kind of look at the other things on the tool. So we're going to go to user info on the bottom right, and you can see that takes us to the exact same place that we were already. So the gear in the top right or user info in the bottom right take you to the same location. So we're going to work backwards here through the order. We're going to go to feedback. Feedback is a very crucial menu. It's important that you take note of where this is located. If you have any problems with your tool, it does not perform a function that you think it should. Uh, it says it's doing something, but it doesn't complete the action. Uh, maybe there's a live data PID that seems to be missing that you don't find on this tool, but you find it on the factory tool or some other tool. This is the place you can submit that feedback to us so that we can correct that issue and fix it. So when you get into the feedback menu, it's going to have a list of a bunch of different vehicles you've worked on. Now, I haven't worked on a ton of vehicles with this particular tool yet, so there's not a very long list. However, if there is anything that I've worked on that there's a feedback log, it'll be right here on feedback. So let's say it's a GM we worked on. We could say, okay, we click on GM. And then we have an option here. So it's going to tell us we can choose a feedback log. So we can hit choose file in the top right. We can choose a feedback log from whatever vehicle we worked on. So I've got some 2021 Silverado files and an old Astro van file. 
So we want to choose whichever log file from whichever vehicle that we had the issue on where it did not function correctly. So in this case, it was an Astrovan. So we've attached the correct log file. Now we're going to decide what kind of an error we ran into. So for me, it was a special function that didn't work. And for me, it was ABS brake bleed. Would not run. Okay, so we've entered in what we've got. You know, put in your phone number or your email here. We're just going to put in my top done uh, email here. So, and we've entered that. And then if you have any pictures that you took, like screenshots of the error or anything like that, you can add those. And then if you have any data stream files that you recorded uh, when this happened, you can also add those. And then you're going to submit the result. And after you do that, it sends it off to the engineers and they have an opportunity to try and correct the problem. So again, feedback is very crucial. If you do run into issues with the tool where it fails to complete an action, something is missing from the tool you believe it should have, or that you found is present on another tool, whether it's a Topdon or an Autel or a Bosch or the factory tool, if it's missing from the tool or doesn't work like it should, let us know. We're always interested in the feedback and that's how we make the tool better for you every day. So that's the feedback menu. Now we'll go to the history menu. History menu contains a list of all the vehicles that you've worked on recently. And you can go back into those and look at any data that you've stored. So on this Volkswagen here, we have a diagnostic report we saved that we can reopen. Looks like we've got some screenshots of data here that we took. And if we had any other types of data, we could certainly go back and look at those as well. So you can also look at your diagnostic reports for everything in this menu. So that's the history folder. Library, this is going to give you some various information that you can access. So you can get some shortcuts to Facebook, YouTube, Chrome. Uh, Chrome can also be gotten to from the main page at the start of the tool. And you'll see in the top right corner, there's a little logo for Chrome. Uh, you've got learning materials here, which is... Uh, basic information just talking about special function playbacks. Coverage list. This is useful uh, if you're curious about whether or not a tool is going to be able to do a specific function. You can go into this menu and you can look up the vehicle and you can check to see if it has the capability for that. You can also find coverage lists like this on Top Don's uh, website so keep that in mind. And then you also have an OBD code library. So the OBD code library here, you can punch in an OBD code, so like a U1000, for instance. And we can ask, okay, what vehicle brand it's going to ask us. So it's just going to look through the database here. So we'll just say GM. So nothing there on GM. Let's try Ford. Nothing on Ford. We'll try Mercedes. Nothing there. So we could pick something else, maybe a little more common. So let's say a P0300. And we'll say GM. So it looks like the full code library is actually not working at this moment. So we're going to omit that. But you can go in and look up some OBD fault codes in here. Uh, it might be because my internet's not connected correctly right now. Um, but that is where you can look up the OBD fault code library. So you can also go into support. This is a spot here where you can remote control other people's tools or have them remote control yours. Um, Generally speaking, it's going to be they're going to remote control your tool so they can pull up TeamViewer on their computer and on TeamViewer they can punch in your ID and they will be able to remote control your tool. This is very useful if you run a diagnostic hotline of some sort uh, or if you happen to have multiple shop locations and you need a technician to help another technician. So really helpful to have this. And again, that's support. Update is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can go in and update the software of your tool. So right here we can go in and we can check for updates. There's no updates available at this moment. You want to check updates regularly as they do update our tools uh, very often. And there are frequently improvements happening to the tool. So you want to make sure you're downloading the latest updates. Battery Tester allows you to use the Topdon BT Mobile Pro S uh, battery tester with your scan tool and you will be able to generate battery testing reports 
with the tool by clicking on the tester and connecting to the tester. So that's pretty nice. Uh, ADOS, if you purchase an ADOS activation card, you can activate ADOS capabilities on the Phoenix Smart. And of course, you'd be able to do all dynamic calibrations uh, just with the scan tool. And then if there are static calibrations, you can buy the Top Don Phoenix Mobile uh, ADOS kits. And uh, those come with various targets that you can use to do static calibrations on vehicles. So that is what the ADOS is for. Uh, great capability and obviously gives you a huge expansion of what you can do with the tool uh, if you so choose to expand into the ADOS realm. Uh, services, that is a menu that is for quick relearns and resets, essentially. So if you've got something like uh, an odometer change, uh, maybe you replace the used module and you need to try and change the odometer on the new one uh, or used one, as it were, um, that would be the menu you'd want to check for that. Um, there's a number of other options on here. If you don't find the option that you're looking for in here, it's important to remember that you might also find that option inside the control module menu when you go in to do a normal diagnostic scan. So we'll point that out when we go in and look at that section of the tool. But just remember the services menu is one place you can find resets and relearns. There is another place which is through the traditional diagnostic menu that you may also find resets and relearns. So we're going to go back here. So now you have two other options on the left side here. You've got auto scan and you've got scan. Auto scan is going to go ahead and acquire the VIN using the dongle and the interface. This works on most newer vehicles. Um, if you have an older vehicle, sometimes they are not able to acquire the VIN via the OBD port. And in those cases, you may have to type in the VIN, uh, but that's what auto scan is used for. Regular scan allows you to selectively choose the year, make, and model, or you can also use OBD2 mode. Now, I like to remind folks that OBD2 mode is a very good tool for drivability diagnostics. So we'll go ahead and we'll scan this vehicle that we're in right now in the OBD2 mode so that you can see that functionality. So we can watch and see the tool here is just checking protocols to see what kind of communication protocol we have. It's going to tell you your readiness status. So there's no codes. Readiness has been completed on seven systems. Readiness not supported on three systems. And all of the other things that you would be interested in. So then we get into our normal OBD2 menu. So basically you have all the same options you would on any other tool that's OBD2 compa uh, compatible or capable. Uh, you can read fault codes, you can read freeze frame data if there is any, so we'll check and see if there is any. There's not. See if we have any fault codes. There was a fault code for an injector circuit. So we'll go ahead and we'll clear that fault code. We actually had it unplugged, which is why we have a fault code. So we're going to read the fault codes again, make sure it's gone. They're gone. Okay. So now we can also go and look and see what our onboard monitoring test results were. Everything's okay. No issues there. We can read live data stream, which again, I'd like to point out that if you're doing drivability diagnostics, OBD2 mode is a very valuable tool. Uh, it's very, very fast. It streams the data at a faster rate than you're usually going to get out of the OEM style data stream. So if you are just doing drivability diagnostics, this is an excellent tool for that. Uh, going into OBD2 mode and looking at that data is helpful. The other thing you'll find in OBD2 mode is typically the diagnostic data PIDs are standardized into a more universal format. So for instance, we look at intake manifold pressure, it's displayed in PSI. If we went on a GM, it's more likely than not also going to be displayed in PSI. If we look at Barrow, we compare, again, PSI. So really, really helpful as far as diagnostics goes um, because the OBD2 mode is, again, faster, which allows you faster graphing and data collection, but also more universalized format. Especially helpful when you're doing things like fuel trim diagnostics. Uh, if you look at OBD2 mode, it's in a standardized format whereas some vehicle manufacturers like to use very different terminology for fuel trim stuff that could be confusing. Uh, OBD2 mode, on the other hand, puts it into one standardized format, which is more easily uh, interpreted for diagnostic purposes. So, we'll go back here. 
So that's uh, one of the things that I would recommend keeping in mind. Again, if you're going in manual scan mode, you can select the vehicle or you can do OBD2 mode. Uh, selecting the vehicle, again, is useful on old vehicles where the auto VIN pull might not work. Or if for any reason it seems like it's not IDing the vehicle correctly, you can always go in and manually ID it as well. So we'll go to auto scan now so you can see what that does. Again, auto scan, the tool is going to automatically pull the VIN number here, and it's going to take us into the menu based on what vehicle it IDs it as. Now, for automatic ID, you also do want to be connected to the internet, so do keep that in mind. Once you get to the main screen after you've scanned it, you have a couple options here. You have quick access and you have local diagnosis. Quick access allows you to bypass going in to scan every module. If you know exactly which what module you would like to go into, and you would like to go straight to a specific module and do a specific function, quick access is what you want. If you are going to scan the vehicle, uh, do a pre-scan, a post-scan, you've cleared some codes, you're confirming a diagnosis, whatever like that, local diagnosis is what you're going to do. So now you're going to see Top Don's system topology map. Now you're going to see this on all of the professional series tools. The topology map is going to show you kind of a data bus network branch tree. So you see the OBD port over on the left here, the gateway here, and then all the different branches of the network. Now, this is helpful for diagnostic purposes. You always want to refer to the OEM wiring diagram to verify which modules are on which networks and whatnot, but this is helpful to at least see whether or not a module is talking. Now, when we do a scan, there's a couple of different options here on the bottom right. We've got choose to scan, so we can selectively scan a module. We've got gateway scan, which basically just pings all of the possible modules that could be in a vehicle. It is not verifying whether or not that module is communicating or whether or not that module is equipped. It is simply asking the gateway, what are all of the modules that you might have? System scan is going to basically ping all the modules that are currently communicating and verify that they are in fact communicating. They will turn blue, so we'll do that. System scan, again, is going to turn all the modules that are currently talking blue. However, it is not checking to see if there are any fault codes in any of these modules. That's a very crucial distinction because if you're not checking for codes and you hit this button and you don't see any red, you're going to assume that everything is good, right? Wrong. If you see blue modules, it simply means that the gateway was able to allow the scan tool to talk to those specific modules. Now, you'll see that there are some modules that are going to show up here in gray. Gray means that it did not talk to that module. That does not mean that the vehicle may not have that module. That only means that it cannot talk to that module at this particular point in time. So it's important to remind yourself, if you're having any other issues with the car, or if you scan it for fault codes and you find any communication related fault codes, you need to check and verify which modules that vehicle is in fact equipped with. Because again, it may have grayed out modules because of the fact that it's not able to talk to those, and it may be the case where the vehicle should have that module and should be able to talk to it. That's where scanning for fault codes comes in and you need to verify that there are no fault codes for communications in other modules. So, we're going to go ahead and stop this scan because we've already completed what we need to here. Now, one thing about Top Don, on all of the Pro Series except for the Max, in order to go back a menu, you simply swipe from either side of the screen. So if we go here and we'll go back into our menu again, if we want to go back, we're just going to swipe the screen. Swipe the screen. So we're going to go back in here and we're going to do the other style scan. So smart scan. That's what I do on every vehicle I work on. Why? Because again, it's checking for fault codes and it's checking for communication. So we're going to do the smart scan. Now we can see we're getting modules in green. They're green now instead of blue because the, the, the uh, scan tool is actually trying to find out if there are any codes. It's not simply just saying, 
hello, are you there on the network? It is also saying, hello, are you on the network? Do you have any fault codes to report? Now, in this case, we're going to find that all the modules that come back are green. There are no modules in this vehicle currently that are failing to communicate. So all of the modules that show up in gray are, in fact, not modules that the vehicle is equipped with. So after we complete this scan, we're going to go through and look at some of the other functions that you'll see on the tool. Now, it's important to remember, functions on this tool will vary depending on the vehicle year, make, model, and vehicle manufacturer. So, important to remember that when you're looking through the functions on the tool and watching this video, because what you see on this car might vary from what you're going to see on a Ford, or a GM, or a Chrysler. But, many of the options that you see will be the same or similar in some format. So we're going to pause the scan because we don't actually need to complete the scan at this point. So now, we're going to show you what happens up on this top banner. So when you're looking at the tool, you want to look at this top banner up here above the uh, control unit tree. There's a number of different options. Sometimes you can drag this banner left to right if there's more than a few options. Again, it's going to be dependent on vehicle year, make, model, and also vehicle manufacturer. So, system list. This is going to give you a more traditional layout of uh, the various modules that are in the vehicle. System topology is where we started at. Full systems list is going to give you a grand master list of all potential modules that this vehicle could be equipped with. That's not saying that it is equipped with these, just that it could be equipped with these. So keep that in mind. We can also look at special functions. Special function is typically something that you're going to have access to on most vehicles. This is similar to the services menu that we went to from the main page. But again, you're going to see all these special functions listed under here. So if you don't see them in the services menu, go in, get to this tree where you have the diagnostic scan completed, and then go to the special function menu on the top. Now, on some European vehicles, specifically Volkswagen and Audi, you will also have another menu called Guided Functions. This is something that you have access to as long as you're connected to the internet. Now, which functions the vehicle has uh, guided functions mapped out for, it's going to vary, very, uh, it's going to vary dependent on the model, the year, and also, uh, you know, just which functions are available on that given vehicle from the factory. So you do have to tell the scan tool specifically what engine is in it and potentially transmission depending on what you're doing. The tool is going to ask to download a file. So again, you do need to make sure that you are connected to the internet in order to download this file. Typically speaking, it's a pretty quick download as long as you have halfway decent internet. So we'll let it download the file here. All right, so picking up where we left off here with guided functions. Guided functions actually allows you to do a number of different vehicle specific things, uh, relearns, things of that nature, and be walked through it by the scan tool itself. So it's a really, really valuable thing to have on Volkswagen and Audi. Um, most manufacturers don't do things like this, and it's really helpful to have this specific capability on this particular vehicle. So just an example, we'll go into engine electronics. After we downloaded the uh, guided function support file for the tool, now we can go in and select a module and look at the guided functions that are supported. So it's going to vary by vehicle manufacturer and uh, year and model, uh, what functions are supported or provided for, but we can see there's a bunch of different ones here. Uh, generate readiness code is probably the most valuable on Volkswagen Audi. You'll find that you can actually do a uh, readiness check for all of the OBD systems uh, in the bay. You don't actually have to complete a drive cycle. You can do it with the scan tool, so it really saves you a lot of time, and I wish every manufacturer would do this but uh, something real specific that's super helpful for Volkswagen and Audi. So again, this was in the guided functions section. Um, so keep that in mind for future, future reference. But uh, the tool is going to walk you through all of these. It's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions. And that's always helpful because, of course, uh, some of these things, there's no written instructions anywhere except within the factory scan tool uh, other than on a tool like Topdon. 
So really helpful to have access to those. We can look in a few other modules here just to see what's offered. Uh, transmission, if we select that, we do have to tell it which transmission is in the vehicle. So we can look at, uh, looks like there's a transmission fluid level check, there's coding of the control module, and then there's basic settings. So it'll walk you through each of those. Then we've got, uh, we can look in brake electronics and see what we've got in there. You can see there's quite a few other ones here. So brake bleeding, there's a guided procedure for brake bleeding. So if you're going to do a brake fluid flush, it's nice to have that because it'll walk you through with what order they want you to do the bleeding in. Uh, also helps you do the automated bleed for the ABS unit. So again, really helpful to have access to these guided functions. So uh, you do also have the special functions menu and some other miscellaneous menus, which I'll be honest with you, I don't typically ever use. Um, so that's the guided functions. Really a helpful thing to have access to on Volkswagen Audi. Again, remember this top banner is going to vary dependent on vehicle manufacturer, uh, year, and of course the model of the vehicle as well. You can see we also have uh, online function. That's going to give us a menu with a variety of different capabilities. So we've got online coding, uh, parametric configuration, we've got uh, online programming, and also matching and calibration. So depending on whether or not you need to perform one of those functions, you will also have access to those as well. Now, when you use each of these different functions is gonna vary by circumstance, but having access to the online coding uh, and the online programming is huge on Volkswagen Audi because you don't have to know what the original coding was for the module. And of course, programming, you won't have to have the factory software to program every module. Now, that database is not going to cover you on every single vehicle and every single module, but it is a tremendous resource to help you in a lot of situations. So at a minimum, if you get a vehicle and replace a module, you can go in here and try the programming option, and if for any reason there is no coverage, then you can go down your normal road of doing programming with the factory software. Which, of course, brings to point the communication interface is also a J2534. So you can use the factory software with that communication interface and you will be able to do programming with the factory software. So several different options you have on the table there. Uh, online matching and calibration is also something you have access to here. So, you know, again, tremendous resources for Volkswagen at Audi. Um, you'll find that on a lot of the European vehicles, we do have a lot of these online functions available uh, and some of the Asian as well. So keep that in mind. This banner up at the top is a really tremendous resource you want to keep your eyes on. You do also have shortcuts to the ADOS menu from here as well uh, if you have a, activated the ADOS functionality on your tool. Now, it's also important to remember that you can go into any module by tapping on it like this. As long as that module is communicating, you will be able to go in and look at all of the normal things that you would expect to on a given module. Uh, reading DTCs, clearing DTCs, module identification specific information, if there's any freeze frame data stored, uh, you can look at data stream information. Now on Volkswagen Audi, you can either look at the old school channel based format, or you can go in and look at a list like this. And the list allows you to selectively choose whatever you might want to look at. So if we want to look at ignition timing and throttle valve angle, we can go there. We can pull up those two specific PIDs together. And if we want, we can graph them. And if we want, we can combine them into one graph. When you combine them into a graph, you can do up to four data streams at a time. And you can also pinch like this to change your time base to a little bit wider. You do also have uh, access and capability to record any of this if you want to. Now remember we do have access up here if we drag from the top of the screen down. Uh, we have screen record is this little camera here. We have the clipboard which is taking screenshots. We have the camera which allows us to take camera, uh, camera pictures with the tool itself. And uh, then we also have a slider for brightness and a volume slider there too. So remember, real helpful here if we're looking at a data stream and we want to take a picture. We can just do that with the clipboard right there. So really nice. Uh, obviously, we can also save samples of data here. We can record the data down on the bottom right, or you can do a screen record if you would prefer that. That's typically what I do is a screen record, or I take uh, screenshots like we just did there. So uh, all of those are at your disposal. 
And again, you know, which data PIDs you have available is going to vary by module uh, as well as by vehicle model year and function menu. Uh, both of those will make those much easier for you. But again, anytime you're working on vehicles, just remember you can always interact with the modules by tapping on them, just like we just did there, to go in and look at things, clear codes, control things, look at live data, etc. Uh, all of those are at your fingertips. So that's a basic overview of all of the different stuff the tool can do. Now you'll notice we can either hit that back arrow in the top left or we can swipe from the side of the screen on either side to go back and it will take us back to the main screen if we swipe enough times. But we're back on the main screen. Uh, the only other thing we mentioned was again, Chrome is accessible in the top right corner. But outside of that, that's the walkthrough for the tool. So if you do run across questions about the tool, uh, you're not sure about something you saw when you were watching this video, or maybe you're working on a specific car and you've got a question about something, feel free to shoot us a, you know, a question, uh, give us a shout on our support hotline, and uh, we'll be happy to help you in any way that we can. I'm Hawken, and thanks for watching.